Hey out there on YouTube, how we doing today? Well, it's kind of overdue to bring this book to the channel. I just recently reread it. You know, Sean Parnell's Outlaw Platoon. So stay tuned. Right after we roll that intro, I'm going to tell you what I think. All right, guys, thank you so much for staying past that intro. Like I said, we're going to take a look at Sean Parnell's book about his time in Afghanistan with the Outlaw Platoon. Now, I want to make sure I get this thing right. It's basically got a manufacturer's uh, suggested price of $26.99. And Sean, if you're watching this, forgive me, man. Guys, go look on Amazon. I'm sure you can find it a heck of a lot cheaper. All right. Uh, it looks like... There we go. It was published in 2012. So, hey, look at that. Cool. I've got a first edition. Nice. Didn't even realize it. Okay, so Sean was part of 3rd Platoon, Bravo Company, 2nd Battalion, 87th Infantry Regiment, nicknamed the Outlaws. Guys, it's hard to describe to you what an infantry platoon can go through. And this isn't like a big, oh, well, you know, we were all outcasts and social misfits, and under the guise of a great leadership, we came together to be the most kick-ass force ever. No. This is seriously, here's an infantry platoon. They trained hard. They partied a little bit harder when they were stateside. You know, there's a great story he shares in here about when they're getting ready to deploy, the whole platoon goes out, like you usually do. You guys go out and, you know, we're going to be the wrathful war gods. We're going to be this. We're going to destroy everything. We're not going to lose anybody. You guys get drunk. You get hardy. You rowdy. You know, you go get laid. You do a lot of fun stuff. Well, I guess some locals got pissed off at his platoon being there and decided to drag Sean outside. You know, they were going to teach him a lesson, not knowing he's got at least 30 people backing him up that came pouring out of the bar to beat the crap out of whoever's trying to beat up their lieutenant. These things happen. It's a good team bonding experience. He's very honest in his book, you know, about when they landed and when they got to their firebase. I should say their forward operating base and how screwed he thought they were. You know? He got very, very lucky, in my opinion. He got a very incredible interpreter who wanted to go on patrols, who wanted to help fight, who wanted to help change things. This guy was motivated by the Taliban killing his parents, excuse me, his dad. So he was motivated to honor his father's legacy by taking the fight to the Taliban. The underlying story in here is one of the other interpreters in his camp was actually informing to the Taliban and ended up causing their favorite Terp to get killed. He got a hold of the satellite phone because they used to let people use them, called the Taliban and said, hey, he's leaving at this point to do this. And it really hurt because this, you know, the original guy had a great rapport with the natives in the area, you know, the local indigenous population. And he was able to help bridge gaps, whereas the new guy they couldn't trust. Things like that happen, but he's very brutally honest about when they found out that, you know, that secondary Terp was the bad guy and caused them to go into ambushes, caused them to go into firefights, caused the death of their favorite Terp, how much he had to fight to hold it under control while this guy was talking to him, to not rack around and put it right in his head. He talks about the successes of his platoon, like the very first firefight they had, how the enemy was basically, you know, slamming them with RPGs and firing off thousands of rounds and took them by shock, but when they got, you know, everything under control and massed the counterattack, they severely took the fight to the enemy and brought hell down upon this planet on them. I believe they were called, like, the, the Green Heads or the Demon Heads or something like that. I can't remember the exact name. But when the Taliban saw the Demon Heads on the outside of their Hummers, they avoided them because they knew they were going to be in for a bloodbath. They knew they were going to hit them hard and take the fight right to them. The one thing in here that really, really messed me up, okay? They were talking about how they were on a patrol and they found a kid wandering around the middle of nowhere. When they got closer to the kid, his eyes were gouged out. He had welts and bruises all over him and he had broken and missing teeth. They took this kid to the nearest village to hopefully the village would take him in, give him aid, give him comfort, give him whatever. 
he was the grandson of like the tribal elder and the tribal elder broke down crying it turns out the Taliban hit the village took boys for sexual pleasure and took great gratification in basically destroying these boys this kid was one of them he got up one night and wandered off not knowing what was going on because obviously after all that your mind's not right so they were able to bring him back and get a rapport with that village just everything they did when they got in there they gave them food they gave them medical supplies they helped treat the other kids that the Taliban helped destroy and yeah you hear a change in my voice because that's the brutality of the enemy we were going up against they have no problem cutting your head off and mounting it on a pike and rolling a video <clears throat> and I hate that phrase and it's been in other books where women are for marriage but boys are for pleasure and that's how they look at it but anywho switching gears it's a great read it's only about I want to say 370 now excuse me if you take out the stuff at the end it's only about 360 pages <clears throat> but what gets me is at the end when you know they're talking about stuff it appears I'm, I'm flipping there because I want to get this right okay and sorry you guys may hear that it's outside someone's nephew who was basically a hero in this platoon showed up and said point blank my uncle told me to seek you know seek you out sir and he's like really who's your uncle and when he told him Sean got basically stone faced and goes do you know your uncle's a freaking hero in this platoon and he goes sir he told me to seek you out and serve with you because you're the best so that says something that says something right there there's been a lot of leaders who have gone through you know especially nowadays and I hate to say it back when I was in they call it the black boon army you really didn't have as much toxic leadership as you do nowadays because back then command sorted it out command got it squared command did this not we have to have bodies to be mission essential and oh well you'll figure it out in the field you figured it out garrison before you even went in the field now sure we had second lieutenants out of West Point and I remember this one guy I, I kept making jokes with him I was like great you got commissioned on freaking my dime you know, and he laughs. He's like, not just your tax dollars, but everybody else paid for my education. At first, he was a little rough, but man, once he got it under him, he became a damn good officer. He became an incredible officer. Um, those are just, you know, my little overviews, guys. It's a good book. It doesn't pull any punches about what this platoon went through its whole time. It just, it doesn't. The fact that you had people wounded and they were still trying to go get their friends. They were still taking the fight to the enemy. Um, Sean Parnell had a traumatic brain injury during one of the uh, you know things. He had you know fluid leaking out of his ears and out of his nose. And he was told, dude, we need to get you out of the field. You need to go in for a CAT scan. You need to do everything else. We have to get you taken care of. And he's like, why? They're staying. I'm staying. You know, he, he said later on it caused massive problems later in his life. But, like, on the back of the book jacket here, you know, he's a former U.S. Army Airborne Ranger who served in the legendary 10th Mountain Division for six years. He retired as a captain, and I'm betting that was medical. He received two bronze stars, one for Valor and, you know, the Purple Heart, which is a lot of other people say, I was there and I forgot to duck. But more importantly, he had the respect of his men. But, you know, guys, that's my thought on his books. I should say my thoughts. I want to know what you think, especially if any of you served in 10th Mountain, man, and especially if any of you serve with, you know, Captain Parnell, leave me your stories with him down below, please. I'd like to know more about the man behind the book from his men. If you're a first time viewer of this channel, thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry, you guys heard that. That's just literally right outside that window that you can see right over there. <laughs> if you're a first time viewer of the channel, I want to thank you so much for, you know, spending a moment of your day watching this video. It means a lot to me that you chose this video. Now, for those of you who have been watching for a while and you haven't subscribed yet, there's going to be a symbol popping up right in one of those two corners. That's going to be the channel logo. Please go ahead and click on that and it's going to bring you right to subscribe. After you subscribe, please go ahead and destroy the bell icon. That's going to notify you every single time I upload a brand new video. Now, speaking of videos, as everyone knows by watching this, they're going to be popping up either over there or over there. 
those are going to be videos that YouTube is going to select from my catalog that they think are going to be a great viewing experience for you. But there we go, guys. My look at Outlaw Platoon by Captain Parnell. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.